So let's now talk specifically about solid solutes in uh, liquid solution. So, so let's say you're adding uh, sodium chloride to, to water. And uh, let me just draw these water molecules here in blue. And uh, just adding salt to water. So as you're adding more and more salt, some of it dissolves in, uh, in water. So you, and we know that when it dissolves, they separate into ions. So you have all a bunch of these Na plus ions surrounded by water molecules. And then you have these um, chloride ions, again, surrounded by water molecules. So, so as you add more and more salt, what happens is at the atomistic levels, the solute particles, which we have now separated into ions, moving around really, you know, vigorously, they're going in all directions. They, they can actually collide with each other sometimes. Sometimes these Na plus ions and Cl minus ions can come in close contact and then they might actually recombine into a sodium chloride compound and then separate out of the solution. So, so, so there are actually two processes going on here at, a, at all times. So there's one process where sodium chloride as a compound is getting into the solution phase where it breaks into sodium plus and Cl minus ions. So basically it's going into solution. And then there is another process that is happening simultaneously wherein these ions actually come together and uh, they collide with each other and then they recrystallize as sodium chloride. So they come out of the solution. So that is called crystallization and they are two opposing processes. And each one of them has a rate at which they are happening. So as you can imagine, Initially, when there is a very small amount of solute in the solution, the probability that, you know, these sodium ions here will find a chloride ion there and, you know, recombine is going to be small. So the rate at which the recrystallization or, or coming out of the solution will be much smaller than rate of dissolution. So, so, so that means at that point, you're uh, basically calling the um, solution unsaturated. But then what happens is as you're uh, going on adding and it keeps on dissolving, the population of these ions in the solution is much higher. The probability of these ions colliding and com recombining and recrystallizing is also higher. So there comes a point where you achieve this dynamic equilibrium. So solute plus solvent going into solution, this is the dissolution that we were talking about, dissolution. And then the solution again breaking up into solute and solvent, meaning the, the, uh, the solute actually coming out of the solution, which we called crystallization. So these, the, there comes a point when this, the rates of these two processes are the same. So that's when we say that this, this, um, this process or this solution is in a dynamic equilibrium uh, with the solute and the solvent. So it is dynamic because, you know, these two processes are happening. They're not, uh, you know, this whole thing is not static. It's not like they're just sitting and doing nothing. They're actually const constantly undergoing dissolution and crystallization. So it is dynamic that way. But as an onlooker from outside, there is nothing happening because there's no more solute dissolving in the, in the uh, solvent. So, so that way this has, uh, this has come to a dynamic equilibrium. So when this happens, um, the concentration of the solution from this point remains constant at that temperature so it doesn't go up anymore so we call the solution saturated then so that is no more solute can be dissolved in the solvent at that point so then moving on we said that besides the nature of the solute and the solvent temperature and pressure also affect the solubility quite a bit so so when it comes to solid solute in liquid Solubility is in fact significantly affected by the temperature. So when I said this, satur this solution, particular solution is saturated, it is saturated only at a given temperature. And if you take this saturated solution at say room temperature and heat it up, it becomes unsaturated. That means you, are, you will be able to then dissolve more sodium chloride in water at a higher temperature. So, so how do we know if uh, whether the, there is an increase in solubility or, or decrease in solubility when you increase the, the temperature of the solution? So for a, for a near saturated solution in general, if, if, uh, if this a process of dissolution or if the solute going into the solution, if the process is actually an endothermic process, meaning delta H solution is greater than zero, endothermic, then increase in temperature by Le, Le Chatelier's principle, increase in temperature will cause more dissolution. So that means the solution then becomes unsaturated and you can actually dissolve more solute in the, 
um, in the solution. So similarly, if if the if the delta H solution is less than zero, meaning it's exothermic, I mean it is actually releasing energy when the solute uh, dissolves in the solution. In that case, if you increase in the temperature, the the process will actually go the reverse, so it will cause more crystallization. So there will be more solute coming out of the solution rather than going into the solution. So so that's how you know whether you know increasing the temperature will make the solubility go up or or down. So now coming to pressure. So we said pressure could have a an impact on solubility. So but when it comes to solid solutes in uh, in liquid solvents, pressure does not have a significant effect. Mainly because uh, both solids and liquids are incompressible. So by increasing the pressure, you're not doing much to the liquid and the solid. But uh, but we'll see later that in in case of gaseous solutes in liquid solvent, pressure pressure actually plays a significant role in uh, the solubility of gas in a liquid but in case of solids and liquids because they are both incompressible they're incompressible they don't react to or they don't respond to increase or decrease in pressure the the, the solubility is mostly unaffected by pressure so solubility so in case of solid solute in liquid solvent pressure does not affect solubility. So in the next video, we'll talk about dissolution of gases in, uh, in liquid solvents.